Yes, we have a million dollar question on the table today. Is it time to buy Alibaba stock? Before answering the question, I would like to reply your question with another question. Why do you want to own Alibaba? Take some time, pause the video and really think about it before proceeding on. While you are at it thinking of the reason, take the time to smash the like button as well to help boost my ego. So, if you have realized by now, the time to buy Alibaba is technically the incomplete question. Like I always mention time and time again, when you are buying a stock, you are owning essentially a part of the business. Yes, clowns like to say that you don't technically own anything because it's an entire VIE structure, it's ADR, it's China, blah blah blah. That's a debate for another day. But back to that, borrowed conviction don't last. So the first and foremost question you have to always ask yourself is, why do you want to be part of this business and Alibaba in particular? I recently came across a video by Joseph Carlson. Massive shout out to him though, he runs a really transparent channel. But I think his recent commentary on Alibaba is not a very accurate representation of what is happening. Anyway, he distilled three main reasons on why people are invested in Alibaba. Number one, on every single metric right now, Alibaba has a very cheap valuation given their growth, their market share and influence and their future expectations. Number two, the fundamentals of Alibaba seem to remain strong and the overall price is getting smashed today because of investor sentiments and the entire US-China tension. Number three, because Charlie Munger bought it. So let me attempt to address them one by one. Alibaba having a cheap valuation does not mean that it's a good investment. There are many, many companies out there which are all trading at a relatively cheap valuation. Intel is a great example. But does that mean that both Alibaba and Intel are good companies to own? Companies being cheap is not a strong enough investment thesis. Yes, some might argue that it provides you with a huge margin of safety, sometimes even an extremely significant margin. But the stock market is essentially always forward-looking. If the company is slowly waning to exist, then What's the point in investing in a cheap yet dying company? You know what else is cheap? The like button is free. So it would be great if you help boost my ego with that. Next, on point number two, where many people assume that the movements surrounding Chinese equities are sentiments driven, where fundamentals are wavering. Joseph made the remark that from the latest quarter, Alibaba fundamentals are changing in a substantial fashion. This is where I seek to disagree. I agree to a large extent that many of such valuation haircut is primarily driven by sentiments and uncertainty looming these companies. I don't think you can easily conclude that a company's mode and fundamentals change, they don't change in the matters of hours or days. Furthermore, as discussed in my earnings report video, where I'll leave the thumbnail here, many of the numbers must be put into context and not just plucking from your ass and do a quick and dirty comparison with its peers. If you go down that route, the results that you get back will also be quick and more importantly, dirty. People cite that strong competition from JD is going to replace Alibaba soon. Clowns like that really makes my day. It really shows the level of awareness and understanding you have and how much a person researched before they speak or they are essentially just jumping on the bandwagon to smash on Alibaba as well. Thankfully, people that are interested in finding out more about Alibaba is slowly discovering this channel and YouTube is kind of ranking me relatively high up so that more people can join me on this uphill battle to fight clowns on the way up Mount Everest. Anyway, on Alibaba's fundamental, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. From the previous earnings report, we can tell that they are definitely facing some sort of stronger competition, mainly from JD only. JD was definitely punching above its weight and managed to beat a lot of all these expectations amidst the backdrop of China's slowdown. Funny thing is, management revised their expectation down to around 20 to 22%, most probably to send back optimism and euphoria. And people are treating it as if Alibaba is a done deal and they are just sitting on their ass waiting to be disrupted. Remember, the markets today prefer potential over trial and tested results. I don't know when this will last, but let's see how long the music will continue playing. Now, on point number three, the manga effect. I believe many investors consciously or even subconsciously are affected by super investors in the stock. So to name a few super investors, manga, Ray Dalio, Monash Pabrai, even though he sold out a huge part recently. 
As emotional creatures, we would like to think that we can remain objective and not get affected. But I think we will still be affected somehow or another. It feels good to be validated by a billionaire who built his entire career with his capital allocation skills, don't you think? Anyway, it's a really dangerous place to be in. If your only thesis for the stock is because Charlie Munger likes it. If Charlie sells out the next quarter, are you going to sell too? Some also bought in because Charlie believes in their numbers, so I believe in them too. I think whether the debate on the veracity of the numbers will open another can of worms. But I would just like to remind all of you that China essentially do not have a monopoly over fraud and manipulation. It's a problem we all face in every part of the world. We have people like Enron, Nicola, and even Wirecard. These investment gurus are good for references, but are not necessarily the Bible to investing. On top of that, there's been many fund managers that are consistently smashing Alibaba as well. Why don't you listen to them instead? Now, this world is a chaotic place. There is room for any kinds of opinions. In the short run, people vote with their dollar bills. And when emotions and narrative comes into the entire picture of investing, that's when opportunities arises too. In the long run, investors and funds only care about results. Hence, the true value and weight of the companies will be tested in the face of the entire stock market. On top of these three points, I would just like to value add by providing two more plausible explanations. Number four, some investors just want exposure to the entire basket of Chinese equities. Some people might be extremely dumbfounded. Who in the right mind would put their money on China and support essentially the Chinese Communist Party? You'll be surprised, especially for people who are narcissistic and thinks that the whole world only has one country and don't bother understanding and appreciating other countries and other cultures. I'm talking about myself, by the way, don't get too bad hurt. But yes, some believe in the China growth story and the further prosperity and developments in the country in the coming decade. Some others want to maximize their diversification benefits. Whatever the case, the largest blue chip Chinese company listed in the United States is Alibaba, while Tencent is traded over the counter, even though it has a much bigger market cap. So there are always two sides of the coin. It's true that by having a dual listing in the United States, it allows the company to have access to much more liquidity in one of the most mature and liquid financial system. On the flip side though, since Alibaba is the biggest Chinese representation, it will essentially just be treated as a proxy for China. Alibaba is like the rabbit being thrown into the lion's den. Whenever there are escalating tensions between the two global powers, namely the US and China, the financial markets will throw a tantrum and put Alibaba on the operating table. Sometimes, not even concerning the underlying business performances. So yes, you need to get comfortable with the amount of volatility and crazy pendulum swings from optimism to pessimism. Just to remind you, back when NIPO was a thing, who cared about delisting VIE, China-US tension, etc. Alibaba was more than double of its current price. When sentiment shifted, even the change in weather in the U US is China's fault. You be your own judge, my friends. And lastly, I think some investors have the mindset that the market is rather overvalued on all counts right now, and they can't seem to find any other opportunities in the market other than Chinese equities given the huge margin of safety they offer and the valuations that they are currently trading at. I think when you invest in a specific company, you actually bring your risk exposure up by many, many notches. Sure, you can do things like your own portfolio diversification strategy and risk management, but by endeavoring into stock picking, you are essentially trying to beat the market. If not, um, you might as well just buy the global index or just the S&P 500. Recently, I came across a very interesting comment. Someone said that I am the type of guy who thinks that the market is always wrong and I am always right. It definitely cracked me up. But I'd just like to remind you that, especially for those of you who are following me, if you think that the market is always right, why are you wasting your time doing research on YouTube, looking at what people talk about specific companies, and more importantly, picking stocks? Just buy the S&P 500 and get on with your life. For those of us who are trying to pick stocks, do remember that, statistically speaking at least, even most of the fund managers do not consistently beat the market over a long time frame, and they do this on a full-time basis. In order for you to really generate alpha and try to beat the market, there are two requirements you need to fulfill. Number one, you must be able to identify something that the market is missing and be right about it. 
Number two, the market will have to agree with you, but only after you bought in. That's how you generate alpha and beat the market in the long run. On point number one, it's easy when all humans are such emotional creatures. We tend to overestimate a company's ability in the next one, two, three years, but underestimate the compounders in the long run. That's when the disparity comes in. I'm not saying that I'm a China expert or I know exactly what Chairman Xi is thinking. My surname is Tay, not Xi. That said, it is quite clear that some things are definitely blown out of proportion. It doesn't take a genius to figure that out. Now, on point number two, where the market has to agree with you in the future. Funny thing is, people on YouTube and on the internet really think that they are the ones moving the markets. Even people like Mid Kevin with 1.8 million subscribers probably can't even move blue chip stocks like Apple or Tesla unless they collectively own a couple of billions of dollars or even in the tens of billions. So you have to really be critical and sensitive about the entire international flow of funds. Right now, from the peak of Alibaba, they lost more than $400 billion in valuation. You think this is really done by retail investors on YouTube like you and me? Lol. Clowns. The main point is, we need these China darlings to get back into the good graces of these fund managers. But in the near term, due to the uncertainty, none of them dare to put their head out for China, especially when China hasn't given the green light that they are done with it, just in case something bad happens. So most of them just sit on the sidelines. If you think about it, how do you construct a diversified portfolio if you never touch the Chinese market? What happens if China really outgrows other developed economies and the companies in China balloon exponentially? How are they going to answer to investors? So, fund rotation will most probably happen, but we just don't know when. For those with patience, just enjoy the ride down. For those without, there are still a ton of companies out there. If you're always at the edge of your seat every time the market opens because another new regulation is introduced, then I think it's not worth your mental health, my friend. Invest in what you personally believe in. And you don't need random people on the internet to tell you to buy Tesla, Palantir, or Alibaba. With that, I'll see you in the next video. But more importantly, I'll see you on the moon. Goodbye!